Hello, my name is Kerry Arthur, and today we're going to talk about our favourite models in Warhammer 40,000. What is your favourite? Why is it your favourite? What impact did it have on you? Did it change anything about the way you entered the hobby, or did it cause you to start an entirely new army? These are the things that I want to know. So let me know in the comments below, as always, because I do read them, as you can tell, because I respond to people and everything. Um, I've got a few sort of contenders for my favourite model, and uh, much like every BuzzFeed article ever, the answers and the final answer as to what my favourite model is will surprise you. Um, that's that's not... No, it is clickbait. It is. It is. I, I won't do that again. Sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's just go straight into it. So, the first, the first model that had a massive proper impact on me, um, this is when I was quite a bit younger, uh, was the Red Terror, of all things. Uh, a model from an army that I have not ever played, I've never collected, and in fact I haven't even fought a Tyranid army for years and years, because, let's face it, they did not have the best of times in the last edition. Poor bastards. They got, they got messed up. Real bad. I'm glad that they have a chance of coming back now, because I have a friend who's got <laughs> a load of Tyranids and he just didn't touch them at all. Shocking. Anyway, Red Terror. The first time I saw that model, um, it was one of those things where you kind of have to take a second to take it all in. As someone who, at the time, I was messing around with Nine Warriors Army, um, it was so ridiculously inhuman and just completely kind of over the top and I hadn't even properly started playing. I had a few models but I wasn't properly in the hobby, I was just sort of messing around on the fringes, putting stuff together, painting terribly um, and as soon as I saw a, a friend of mine from all that time ago had a Tyranid army and I saw him bring out this Red Terror for the first time, he was having a, a battle against another friend who was playing Imperial Guard and the, like the 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 juxtaposition of a bunch of humans with a few tanks and some heavy weapons teams versus this tide of bloody tyranids and this huge like six limbed nightmare fuel monster with a pincer tail and four massive scything arms and a couple of smaller stabby arms it was one of those things where I looked at it and that was what kind of pushed me into really putting an effort in and actually trying to build up a usable army to properly play. I just hadn't really in that point seen something that made me go, I want to fight that. Like, I want to fight that thing. For some reason, the Red Terror did that for me and I was like, I, I, want, I want my army to face that army. That's really cool. And so, well, <laughs> I did. I believe I lost horrendously, but I did. But ever since then, it's like that particular model has just had this kind of... It just had an impact. It had an impact that I don't think any other Tyranid model has really had. And I've, se you know, I've seen the different releases they've had, and I've seen the various models they've got now. They all look monstrous. They all look thoroughly alien, but none of them quite have that same kind of... What the hell is that? that the Red Terror had the first time I saw it. And for that reason, even the newer version is... It, it just stays up there as one of my favourites. I mean, it's looking a little bit dated now, and of course the original version is looking very dated now. But there's just something about that... that pose and that shape that... I, I don't know, it just has that kind of... that kind of visceral sort of... Oh God, that's monstrous just really like it. I really like it. It's it's a really well-designed model, even if it's not that sort of well-designed compared to newer models, if that makes sense. Another... I'm just picking stuff I've never even played, I've realised. The Wraith Lord. The Wraith Lord was the thing that actually sold me on Eldar, in a weird way. Because I'd played Iron Warriors, I had a Necrons army as well, I was starting to build up a, an Orc army, and within my group of friends, no one had played Eldar, no one had Eldar, we had we had a bunch of Berserkers, we had Khorne, um, I say a bunch of Berserkers because that army was literally just fucking Berserkers, and a dude on a Juggernaut, and that was it, that was that, was that army, and it was still pretty horrendous, just because of sheer numbers and weight of attacks. Uh, we had Imperial Guard, we had Space Wolves, we had Tyranids, and uh, another friend had, I believe it was Dark Angels, I'm pretty sure. 
but he was one of those people who liked to bend the rules. Have you ever heard of the squad reorganization rule that means that you can just move units around and put them in different places having already moved so that the right ones take the right wounds? Have you ever heard of that rule? Because I hadn't, but he had. It was that sort of person. Um, none of us had played Eldar, and it wasn't until we went to a local gaming group for the first time, sort of as a group, taking as much stuff as we could fit into a bunch of toolboxes we'd bought from bloody B&Q to transport our armies, that I saw an Eldar army for the first time. And I'd heard about them, and I'd read stuff about them, and I'd seen, like, really shitty photos of them. Um, but at that point, I still wasn't getting White Dwarf. I hadn't seen anything with features or anything like that on them. And to me, the idea of just elves in space didn't sell me. I was all down for orcs in space because they were hilarious and just, like, killing stuff, which was perfect for when you're, like, 15 or whatever. Eldar, I just wasn't convinced. I was, they just didn't sound fun. They didn't sound... They didn't sound like they could take any sort of beating, you know? They, they just seemed flimsy from what I'd heard and from what people had said. And then I saw an Elder Army that had, it must have been, three Wraith Lords in it. The Wraith Lords single-handedly sold me on the entire concept of, of Eldar. I was just like, oh, oh, okay. Right, so it is basically Elves in Space, but it's Elves in Space with fucking giant robots covered in guns. I'm down. I'm down. I can I like it. I'm I'm I can cope with that. I can deal with that. And there's something about the design of the Wraith Lord that I know that obviously Games Workshop will design things so they remain in keeping. But the Wraith Lord hasn't changed a vast amount. It has obviously changed over the years, but it's still recognizably the same thing that I saw all those years ago. And it's still it still works. There's a lot of stuff that I feel in the Games Workshop catalog that doesn't quite work anymore, that needs to be updated, that needs to have that, just that nice refreshing touch on it. And the Wraith Lord just seems a little bit timeless. I just really like the design of it. And like as I say, it kind of, it sold me on the idea of an entire faction. And for that reason, it's just, it's just sort of stay there as one of those things where I can always, always appreciate a nicely painted Wraith Lord. The third choice, unsurprisingly, probably, is probably the only actual non-surprise in the list, is your standard tactical space marine. Not the fancy ones, not the ones that are not like Vanguard or Sternguard veterans, I'm not talking captains that have got cloaks covered in skulls, or fucking Roman centurion plumes coming out of their heads, none of that. Just your, your bog standard tactical squad. And that's obviously, I mean they are, I hate using the word iconic, but the Space Marine is an iconic part of 40k. He is the poster boy of Warhammer 40,000. Sadly now replaced by a primary Space Marine. Um, but, you know, times change. And whilst I have got a little bit bored of Space Marines because I've had so many Space Marine based armies, I can still just appreciate the, the look, the design of just a standard tactical Marine. And there's always that part of me as well where even now, even having got to the point where I'm, I think I'm kind of done with Space Marines for a bit, I can still look at your, at your standard tactical marine and think, I could do anything I want with that. I could make that look however I wanted it to look. If I wanted it to look like some sort of, you know, power armor wearing barbarian, you can do that. If you want to turn it into a chaos spike covered nutcase, you can do that. There's so much you can do in terms of customization and kit bashing and converting. It's considering that orcs are to me should be the race that are the most kit bashable you know you should be able to take anything and turn it into something orky to be honest tactical marines are not that far behind because you can take third party bits you can take bits from other you know other kits you can create a chapter that looks just how you want it to look and whilst you can do that with other armies in 40k I can't I just don't see other armies that have the sheer range of options, the sheer number of the sheer number of unique things that you can do. Uh, like, space means you can just do whatever you like. And for that reason, uh, you know, 
They're the poster boys, they are the face of 40k, but they're also so easy to make your own that I cannot help but no matter how often I get sick of looking at my own Space Marines or how often I get sick of painting Space Marines, I will always be able to look at your bog standard tactical marine with a bolter and go, I've got a cool idea for that. There's just not that much stuff in 40k you can do that with. You can paint them however you like, but the tactical marine for me is like the ultimate the ultimate thing that you can just kit bash and alter and change and you know mess about with until you get exactly what you want it's just a good model even even way back when they looked janky as hell as all games workshop stuff did just good models it's just a good look it has to be i mean god's sake it's got to be a good look it wouldn't be as damn popular as it is would it the final entry right the, my genuinely this is genuinely my favorite my favorite model out of all the stuff that Games Workshop have made, you know, up until this point. And I'll say now, before I put a picture up, there are far more detailed models available. There are far more dynamic models available. There are far prettier models available. I mean, some of the stuff that's been coming out of the recent releases, like the Inari stuff and Belisarius Call and things, the detail on them is outstanding, it's fantastic. There are actual dynamic poses coming out of Games Workshop now. You can actually see these things walking or moving as they should instead of being stock still statues. All that being said, somehow, and I don't know how it's happened, by far my favourite model in all of 40k is a Baneblade variant. <laughs> now, over there, I've got an Imperial Knight, I've got a Typhon Heavy Siege Tank, I've got God knows what else, Centurions and Land Raiders and all, all kinds of stuff in this office, off to, off to the, uh, the left of me there. I don't have a Shadow Sword, but if there's one tank I am going to get when I start my next project, which is Imperial Guard, um, it's going to be a Shadow Sword. And there's, there's several reasons for this. Firstly... As giant, impractical, stupid tanks go, I just feel like the Shadow Sword looks the best of the giant, stupid, impractical tanks. It's covered in guns. It has a colossal volcano cannon on the front, which is like anti-Titan. It's anti-vehicle. So anti is a bit of an overstatement for normal vehicles. Titans don't even want to get hit by this thing. And even though... If you look past the rivets and the barrels, it's not the most hugely detailed model. I mean, it, it looks good for a giant tank, but, you know, there's more sort of impressively sculpted stuff out there from Games Workshop. For me, the the Shadow Sword is like... It's the, it's the perfect metaphor for the Imperium, just sort of distilled into one awesome-looking model. It is... It's crude, and it's low-tech, but it's also high-tech. You know, the actual chassis of the of the Shadow Sword is not a complex thing. It's, it's literally just a giant tank. And it's just a giant tank with a fucking massive, technologically complex cannon placed on top of it. This thing is cumbersome, it's too big, it's too heavy, it's, you know, in terms of the speed of warfare in the 41st millennium, Bane Blades are slow as fuck compared to stuff that Eldar have got, that Tau have got, that hell, even Space Marines have got a lot of the time. And yet, it's expected to go out there into battle and shoot down Titans the size of, of tower blocks. It's the perfect sort of mixture of just crude design you know complex weaponry stuck on stuff that looks like it was never meant to support it it looks like it should be completely outclassed by everything but it's so powerful and it's so it's just so brutal looking compared to all of this alien tech i mean apart from orcs obviously but you look at like a shadow sword compared to anything the tau can field anything the eldar can field anything the dark eldar can field. Hell, a lot of Space Marine stuff now is starting to look more high-tech than that thing. And yet, because of what it is, it's by far my favourite model, because it's part of that line of just 
taking a not even modern human army let's be honest taking like a world war ii human army sticking it in space and giving them la like lasers instead of bullets and going there you go go and fight the giant ravenous horde of aliens that intend to suck all life from this planet i love it i absolutely love that model and it's it's in a way it's because it shouldn't fit but it absolutely does. It shouldn't be on other fucking planets shooting stuff the size of mountains. But it is. It's there. It's doing it. And it looks horrendous in the best possible way as it's doing it. It just it sums up the Imperial Guard. And for me, it sums up the Imperium as well. The Imperium is, yeah, it's all about space marines. It's all about, oh, look at the finest that humanity can provide. But then when you get right down to it, the vast majority of wars are not being fought by superhuman soldiers when it comes to the Imperium. They're being fought by fucking ancient, outdated tanks just sitting behind outdated humans and outdated equipment. And I love that. I genuinely love that. So, the Shadow Sword is my favourite model that, for, that Games Workshop do for 40k. What is your favourite model? I want to know why. All the stuff I said at the start, I'm not going to repeat myself again because I've already said it once. Let me know in the comments below. I always read them as you know. In the meantime, there's plenty of stuff to click all over the screen. There's Patreon, subscribe, videos, all of that shit. Click them if you like. Don't click if you don't want to. It's entirely up to you. And uh, I will see you for the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Toodaloo.